Hello friends, I'm Dr. Priyanka Sharvasto. I'm again back with the new topic known as messenger RNA processing. In our last lecture, we studied about the transcription or messenger RNA synthesis. So what happened in the prokaryotes that immediately when the transcription starts, translation takes place simultaneously. That is, once the uh, RNA start coming out from the that uh, polymerase loop, RNA polymerase, big polymerase loop, immediately the translation also takes place. That is, a protein synthesis takes place simultaneously. So, there is no room or no scope for the messenger RNA to get degraded or unstable. But this is not in the case of the eukaryotes. What happens in the eukaryotes that only once the transcription is finished, then only translation starts. Secondly, transcription takes place, that is a messenger RNA synthesis takes place in the nucleus, but the translation that is from messenger RNA to the protein process takes place in the cytoplasm. So, messenger RNA has to travel all the way from the nucleus to the cytoplasm for the translation. So, there is a lot of room that the RNAs may degrade the messenger RNA and make it unstable. So, in the pro in the eukaryotes, we see that messenger RNA undergoes a process called the uh, messenger RNA maturation or the messenger RNA processing, where we make the messenger RNA more stable once the transcription is finished. So, there are many stages. Let's uh, see how the messenger RNA processing takes place. In the eukaryotes, the messenger RNA has been transcribed known as pre-messenger RNA and therefore it must undergo pro other process for it to mature into the messenger RNA, mature messenger RNA. These are known as pre-translational messenger processes. As I told you that before the translation start, the messenger RNA need to get more stable, need to get mature, then only the translation starts. So, the process include 5 dash capping, polyadenylation and the splicing. So, for, uh, 5 dash capping first stage, we see this is the addition of the methylated guanine cap to the 5 dash end of the messenger RNA. The 5 dash cap help in the recognition of the messenger RNA molecule by the ribosome and to also protect the immature messenger RNA from the degradation of the RNAs. So, the messenger, all the RNAs or in fact any nucleic DNA, any nucleotide has 5 dash and the 3 dash. So, since the messenger RNA is a single stranded, so first we need to secure the 5 dash and we need to protect the 5 dash and for that we add the uh, 7 uh, unosine, methylated unosine cap due to which it become more stable and not only stable this cap also help in the attachment of the ribosome during the translation process now let's see the structure of the messenger rna cap and this you can all see it is a simple uh, uh, rna and there is an attached of 7 methyl guanosine you now see. Now next comes the polyadenylation. See, we have secured a 5 dash end. Now we need to secure a 3 dash end. So this is the addition of the poly A tail to the 3 dash end of the messenger RNA. The addition of the 50 to 50 or more adenine nucleotide at the 3 dash end forming a poly A tail is a second kind of modification to the eukaryotic messenger RNA. The poly A tail is made up of several molecules of adenosine monophosphate which stabilizes the RNA and enhances the ribosome attachment to the messenger RNA. Again, the polyadenylation at the 3 dash end that is poly adding the poly A nucleotide at the 3 dash end help again destabilizing the messenger RNA at the 3 dash end. So, here is we see a simple poly polyadenylation process that there is a poly A site that is the CA and where, where the cleavage of the uh, further downstream element which is a GT rich or GU rich takes place and then there is an addition of the poly A nucleotide. Okay, now the question is very interesting that which enzyme does this all and it is none other but the poly A polymerase. I am sure you are going to remember this enzyme that it is not any kind of DNA polymerase or RNA polymerase but the name of the enzyme which add the poly A tail is the poly A polymerase to with the uh, help of this enzyme we can add n number of nucleotide n number of adenine to the 3 dash and making it more stable for uh, the RNAs 
now next comes the splicing splicing see messenger uh, pre messenger rna contains both the coding and the non coding region non coding region are the called the introns and coding region are called the exon so to make a messenger rna a mature messenger rna which contains only the information to get translated into the uh, protein we need to remove the non coding region or the introns so splicing this is the coding of the one genetic sequence for different proteins conserving the genetic material the process involved removing of the non coding sequences known as intron by the spliceosome excision then joining of the coding sequences known as the exon by the ligation splicing is a sequence dependent very very important thing sequence dependent therefore it occurs within the transcript this allows many protein to be made of the single messenger rna at the end of the splicing process the mes uh, mature messenger rna will have been made mature messenger rna then become the messenger carrier which allows protein synthesis to occur mature messenger rna has open reading frame a region that get translated into the protein translation of one uh, reading frame that is the open reading frame is done in three blocks of three nucleotide called the codons at the end of the 5 dash and the 3 dash end of the art untranslated region also called the utr region which are not translated during the protein synthesis so here we see how the splicing of the introns takes place that is first that is usnrp is a small nucleolar ribonucleoprotein uh, u1 small nuclear ribonucleoprotein get attached to the 5 dash splice site and the uh, u2 get attached uh, before some nucleotide of the 3 dash end then they invite other uh, snrnps like uh, u4 by u6 and u5 to get attached with the uh, same forming a region called the spliceosome now in a very smart manner that is they form a lariat kind of the uh, uh, structure in the introns as you can see in the diagram there's a lariat formation and then finally the there's a remover of the la lariat formation of the intron intron is removed and two dash end of the two ends of the exons are ligated using the dna ligase or the rna ligase and further resulting into the mature rna whose five dash end is capped three dash is polyadenine Related and, and all the introns that is non coding regions are removed only what we have is the coding region or the uh, the coding region or the which has some meaning which can be translated into the protein or the enzyme that's all for today friends and in the next lecture we'll continue this uh, series which we're going to explain the types of the introns how each kind of the intron what is the meaning of each kind of the intron and how they are removed via different processes